Hello and welcome to another uh, teaching session with your host, Evangelist Terry Bailey. You are viewing a, a learning experience from uh, the Cultivating the Crop Ministry where we hang our thought on uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 3 and 6 where the scripture says, Paul planted, Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. Amen. And what our desire is to um, give you what the Lord has given us and that you may uh, learn uh, something new in reference to the scripture that the Lord has uh, placed on my heart and that you will take that knowledge and you will um, place it into your everyday, uh, everyday life. Amen. Uh, we, if you enjoy what you're hearing uh, with these lessons, you can find me on the YouTube. Uh, my address is uh, ttbministries at gmail.com. And then we are uh, also tweet. Um, that tweet address is evang, E-V-A-N-G underscore T underscore Bailey. Amen. And we are on the radio every third Saturday from... Uh, 4.30 to 5 o'clock on Inspiration with Every Nation with your host High Flying and that uh, uh, radio address is www.iit.edu Amen and you can listen to that Amen uh, We just want to have prayer and then we want to move on Amen Father God in the name of Jesus Lord we thank you for another day Most of all we thank you for Jesus How you hung, bled and died Got up with all the power in your hand Lord, we thank you for your saving, healing, your keeping power. And Lord, we thank you for a mind that stayed on you because we trust you. God, we thank you for the listeners, God. I give them wisdom, revelation, understanding, and knowledge of what you are uh, trying to uh, give them on today. God, we just thank you right now for the opportunity to serve in this capacity. God, we thank you for an open door opportunity to do even more. God, we thank you for uh, knowing to be a good steward over what you have given us, God. And you told us not to despise wild beginnings. God, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you to cover your people with the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary's cross. And God, we just thank you for knowing that all things are becoming new. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Uh, our lesson for today is coming from Proverbs, the 16th chapter and the 7th verse. Amen. Again, Proverbs, the 16th chapter and the 7th verse. I mean, we're going to take our thought from um, one uh, uh, passage of scripture, amen, um, and that will be the seventh verse where it says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be, to be at peace with him, amen, and the word of the Lord is blessed, amen. We're going to learn, uh, and uh, we're going to learn. That making, we're going to take the thought that making sure you are pleasing the Lord. And how we are to please the Lord. And what is the importance of pleasing the Lord. I mean, you know, we please everybody on today. We please our spouse, we please our children, we please our, our uh, 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 that, that, that supervisor on the job. We please people at the church. We please everybody, but are we, as the body of Christ, truly pleasing the Lord? And that should be your desire on today, to be pleasing. Amen. When um, Jesus was baptized at the river of Jordan, and the uh, sky opened up, and the Spirit came in the form of a dove, and out of the sky uh, it was stated, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. We too should want to know in our, in, deep down in our soul that we are pleasing the Lord on today. Amen. Uh, uh, when we look at Proverbs, I mean, this 16th chapter and the, and the 7th verse, I mean, we have to remember who wrote this. And this was written by King Solomon. I mean, King Solomon, who took over the throne after his father David in 1 Kings uh, 2 and 46, uh, prayed for wisdom, amen, in 1 Kings 3 and 9. And I believe that the Lord uh, endued and empowered him with with uh, uh, thoughts that would increase us in knowledge. Amen. The scripture tells us if a man la uh, uh, desires wisdom or if he lacks it, he should ask of the Lord and he would give it to him. Amen. And so uh, Solomon 
just writes this. He says, when a man weighs, please the Lord, he'll make his enemy, enemies be at peace with him. Amen. Please. What is it is what does it mean to please? It means to give pleasure or satisfaction. So I mean we ought to be satisfying to the Lord. Amen. When we are pleasing our spouse or, or, or that significant other, amen, in, in whatever uh, capacity that that person holds, you want to do your best for them. Because you want them to be happy about what you are giving them. What you are providing to them. Amen. And it should be 100 fold times whatever you're doing for somebody here on earth than what we do for our Heavenly Father. Amen. When we please the Lord, I mean, we should give Him our best. And a lot of times now, saints, we're not giving the Lord our best. We feel that we're giving Him our best. But, you know, when we're giving Him our best, we should feel good about what we do. And we should be more apt to thinking about the other person's feelings versus ourselves. And when we look over, uh, there are many ways that we can please the Lord. And when we can please the Lord even uh, by accepting Him uh, as our as, as Savior and Lord. We please the Lord when we give. We give of our uh, of our tithes. Malachi 3 and 6, shall a man rob God? So we please the Lord in that capacity. We please Him when we serve uh, our fellow man. Amen. When we are out on the mission field. Amen. Giving in the nursing home. Giving, amen, um, at our local church. Giving, amen, at a blood drive, at a food drive. Amen. Giving. We serve the Lord and that is our giving. That, I mean, there are many different ways besides finances that you can give. And this pleases the Lord because we are the Lord's, we are God's hands and we are God's feet. We are the heart of God. And so that is how we're supposed to be given. This is how we can please the Lord. But you know, over in Hebrews, Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the 6th verse. We're going to quickly go there. Amen. Hebrews, the 11th and 6th. We consider Hebrews the, uh, the, amen. Hebrews 11. They like to call it the, the hall and the wall of fame. And then, man, this is where, amen, uh, amen, the writer, amen, who is unknown, but we really think it's Paul, breaks down, amen, the lineage of how people did that faith walk and how they received the blessings of the Lord. But Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, how do your way really please the Lord? It's when you have faith. What is faith? We can jump back over to Hebrews 11, 1 and 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This is how we truly please the Lord. When we believe that although we don't have it, we got it. Amen. Many of my teachings come from a thought of not having it, but having it. Remembering the foundation that, that, that God said that he would provide all of our needs. And that he was our shepherd and that we shall not want. And it is impossible to please the Lord without some faith. And saints, there are different levels of faith. There's a different, there's a different level of faith between the flu and some cast. Flu faith, you can saw the food around. Yeah, okay, you know. But when you're talking about cancer, when you're talking about AIDS, when you're talking about these incurable diseases, you're going to have to believe that He is. And after you have sought the Lord, after you have went to the Lord in prayer, you have to believe that He is a rewarder that because you diligently, you went after God. You sought the Lord. Amen. Faith, amen, is the catalyst is the foundation of the Christian belief that somebody came from heaven that 
rose and let's keep let's keep it moving and say and he's returning we have to believe that just that's the that's how we uh, obtain salvation believing confessing our sins Romans 10 9 and 10 uh, uh, confessing our sins admitting that uh, that Jesus died and, and, and believing in our heart that he rose amen that's the catalyst of the Christian faith amen but even in that it's still a belief process. We have to have faith. We have to know that the word of God is sure. That it will never fail. That everything is going to pass away. The word is going to stand. The word is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. The word. And with the word. How does faith come? By hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. So you have to. Have some faith in order to please the Lord. Look what happens after you have this faith. Let's jump back over to, amen, to Proverbs. Amen. Let's jump back over right quick. Amen. Proverbs 16 and 7 is where we started, amen, our, our, our lesson in our thought. It says, when a man weighs, and we've discussed ways that we could please the Lord, having faith, accept Him as our Savior, giving our tithes and our offerings, uh, and serving our fellow man. Then, he maketh even his enemies be at peace with him. Now, why is that part, the tail end of the scripture, just as important as the beginning? Because, saints, I don't know about y'all, but I live here on earth, in the state of Texas, in this city named Rollett. And, even though I feel that I'm a peaceful person, there are some people that don't like me. There are people that are assigned by Satan not to like me. But because I have a faith walk, because I have a faith walk, and I just explained to you that that's going to please the Lord, then he's going to make those people that don't particularly care for me be at peace with me. In other words, they ain't got to like me. But they're not going to uh, do anything to me. They're not going to disrespect me. They're not going to anything that they do will not prosper. They're not going to be able to go anywhere. They're going to be at peace. And do you know what it really means to be at peace? There's no friction. There's no confusion. There's no, my favorite word, there's no strife. It's just, it's just all good. It's just cool. And this is what, this is the attitude that you should want in your life now, today. You should want that peace that surpasses all understanding. Especially, and I'm going to be honest with you, I have a testimony and, and uh, there was a young lady on the job and, and um, she came in and uh, she wasn't doing as well as she wanted to be. She, she's very offensive and, um, you know, she she just wasn't taking things well. And she just did not like Sister Bailey. And so when the Lord placed me in another area where a sickness had attacked my body, and then I had to go on a total faith walk. And I watched this young lady not knowing anything that was going on with me turn over. And I would believe because I truly walked in faith, not only with my own help, but with my mother's help and some other issues, where I believe God for a turnaround. I watched this young lady turn, and she's just so pleasant and so cordial. She used to bring things to work and pass it out to everybody but me. I hadn't done nothing. And I searched myself to make sure I hadn't done nothing. My, my, my boss would, 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 was just, you know, she, I could tell that she wanted me gone. But again, because I did a faith walk. That faith walk pleased the Lord. And when I had my sickness, she was just as supportive as she, if she was a family. I've watched other people turn over that did not care for me. But because I had a faith.
faith walk. Because I cast my cares upon the Lord and He cares for me. And it takes faith for you to give God. Give something to somebody you can't see, you can't touch, you don't think talk back. You, you know, most, of, most, most people are, are tangible. We have to feel it. We have to see it. We have to have it first. But the faith walk is not having it. Jesus told Thomas, Blessed are those that have not seen and yet believe. That's the faith walk. And when you get that walk, your enemies will be at peace with you. You will be able to go on an arena and there will be a level of respect that you have never known. And just a serenity, a serene atmosphere that you have never known. God is able to fix it. He is able to fix it. But we have got to give him something. We have got to give him trust and we have to give him confidence in him. We have to know that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I mean, since we used to sing, I, 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 I'm going to lay down my burdens, die by the roadside, and we're going to study war no more. No more. Saints, we have got to get back to foundational things of it is God. For God I live, and for God I die. It is God or it is nothing. We have got to get to a point in our life well, we believe, and that settles that. And I'm going to tell you something. In this time, in this, we are in the last days, and in this dispensation, you have got to believe on the Lord. It said, believe on the Lord, and you shall be saved. Trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lead not to our own understanding. In all the ways, acknowledge the Lord, and he shall direct that path. We have got to believe. And that is faith. Believing something we don't see yet. But we have to know in our heart. I took it to the Lord in prayer. That's a conversation with him. And I left that right there. And I'm going to stand here. And watch God move. And I am telling you. When you. go, When you are going into that process. When you are going into that process. Those people that you can't stand. They will be at peace with you. Oh yeah, the devil will try you. He'll try you. But I dare you to just be still and know that he is God. Hold your peace. Exodus 13 and 13, I believe. The scripture said the Lord will fight your battle. I dare you to please the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, there's one thing about it. When you deal with somebody that don't like you, that can be hard on sex. Because, see, they can cuss you out and they can, they can treat you like a dog. You're not supposed to give them what they give you. So you want your enemy. You want to be at peace with your enemy. You want to be peace, at peace there. Some people say, I ain't got to be. Yes, you do. Uh, the devil is your enemy. That is the enemy. That is the adversary. That is the war of the light. That is the angel of light. That is your enemy. Anything that is not of God, that is your enemy. But even with Jesus, when he was on the mount for 40 days and 40 nights, he told Satan, get thee behind me. And Satan went off and the angels ministered unto him. He was, that was his enemy. That was his enemy. But when he told him to go on and he went on, there was peace there with those angels. Saints, 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 saints. We have got to. Let me encourage you to stay in the word. If you're between ministries, find you somebody to watch. Ask the Lord to send you to somewhere where they're teaching the word. You need the word. And when you know it's in the word, you know your rights. And you know that Satan can only do so much. He can only do go so far. Amen. We thank and praise God for the thought of my ways. I want my ways. I want to be pleasing unto the Lord. I want him to be able to look down here and say, there go Terry. There go Terry. She, she, she was built for that storm. And she's made me proud. You should want to be, 
You should want the Lord to be proud of you. Your works, your, 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 your handiwork. You should want the Lord to be proud of you. You know, it's just like our children. Our children want us to be proud of them. I have a 30-year-old son, I think, and praise God for him. And he still wants me to be proud of his accomplishments. My daughter, my other sons, they want me to be proud. And before I hang up with them, I let them know, I am proud of you. In the same like I want the Lord to be pleasing with whatever I do. And that's why I'm sold out for the Lord. I'm sold out for the Lord. Amen. Again, we thank and praise God for this opportunity to teach. Amen. We thank and praise God for our technical director. Amen. Our spiritual advisor, our intercessor. Amen. Our promotions manager. Amen. You have been listening to a teaching session with your host, Evangelist Terry Bailey, with the Cultivating the Crop Ministry. Amen. Again, uh, if you like what you hear, amen, you can find me on the YouTube at TTB Ministries at Gmail. Dot com, amen. You can also, I, I do tweet. Uh, my tweet address is evang, E V A N G underscore T underscore Bailey. Amen. Uh, we are on the radio the station www.itt.edu. Uh, the name of the program is Inspiration for Every Nation. Amen. We'll be on there this Saturday from 4 30 to 5 o'clock. Amen. And you can tune us in and listen. Amen. But we just thank and praise God for you. Amen. Uh, most of all, obtaining something where which you can grow by. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for one more time. Lord, we ask uh, that you will put a spirit of wanting, uh, for people wanting to please you more than themselves. God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you will cover your people with the blood. The blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. The, the protection blood, the saving blood, the healing blood. God, there's so much power in your blood. Father, we ask, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that, Lord, somebody want, Lord, quicken somebody that they want to change. And they want to make you the Lord of their lives. If there's somebody that's not, that's listening, that's not saved, God, we ask that uh, their heart be pricked, amen, to want to follow you, Lord. Lord, let them know it's just as easy to just admit, believe, and then confess. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for every worker in the vineyard. For every pastor, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. God, for all lay people, God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will cover over there in Atlanta, Georgia, God, where the snow is falling. Somebody called it a biblical storm, but God, you know, I know it's just... It's, 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 it's your soon to return. God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you will just do something for the people of God that are listening. Give them hope, God, on today. Let them know that a change is truly coming. But we must be ready. And to please you, that we have to have the faith. To reach the unreachable. That faith that can conquer anything. God, I just thank you, Lord, because I feel you down in my soul. I thank you, God. I thank you for this opportunity, God. I praise you, I glorify you, and I magnify you on today. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen.